Our topic for today is duct designing. Sample project of duct sizing using equal friction method. Let's say there is an AHU of 5000 CFM capacity. This AHU provides 5000 CFM to the first section of the duct. Let's call this section as section A. From this section A, 1000 CFM is taken by diffuser number 1. So out of the remaining 4000 CFM that is being passed through the reducer to the section B of the main duct. From this 4000 CFM, 1000 CFM is taken by diffuser number 2 and the remaining air flows through the C section of the duct. Out of this 1000 CFM is taken by diffuser number 3 remaining 2000 flows through the section D of the duct. Out of this 1000 CFM is taken by diffuser number 4 and remaining 1000 flows through section E of the main duct. Now from this 1000 CFM 500 CFM is taken by diffuser number 5 and the remaining 500 CFM is being passed on to diffuser number 6. So there are 6 diffusers so we'll be designing the main duct of this sample project using equal friction method. The first step in designing any duct system is to check the maximum velocity of air flowing in any section of the duct should not exceed a recommended maximum velocity as suggested by carrier. So in our case, let's say we are designing a library. So this is the row of library and because we are designing a supply duct so this is the column of supply duct so these two merge at 2000 fpm so carrier is suggesting us that the maximum allowable velocity of flowing air in the duct should be 2000 fpm so we'll just note it down somewhere the next step is to determine the maximum velocity of air flowing in the duct in our sample project. It is very important to understand that the maximum velocity of air flowing in the duct has to be there in the first section because as the air is flowing, its velocity is getting lesser and lesser. So in our case, the first section we have named it as section A. So we'll determine the velocity of air flowing in section A and we'll call it as the maximum velocity of air in our sample project. In order to do that, we'll take help from this table provided by ASHRAE. In this table, on the horizontal axis, we have air quantity, which is your air flow rate in CFM. On the vertical axis, there is friction loss given, which is measured in inch of water column per 100 feet length of duct. So, in the first section, which is section A, the quantity of air flowing is 5000 CFM. So we'll draw a line corresponding to this 5000 CFM and for our project we are assuming the friction loss to be 0 0.08. In general this is taken between 0 0.08 to 1. So for low velocity system we generally take the friction loss to be 0 0.08. So we'll draw a line parallel to this 0 0.08. So these two lines intersect at this point. Now from this intersection point we need to draw a line parallel to velocity lines. So all these lines are velocity lines. We'll draw a line parallel to velocity lines. So it is clear from the graph that the velocity is found somewhere between 1200 to 1400. So we'll call this velocity to be 1350. So the maximum velocity of air flowing in the duct for our sample project is 1350 fpm which is flowing in section a so we have found the maximum recommended velocity by carrier for any library project which was 2000 fpm and for our sample project we got the vmax as 1350 fpm in section a so we don't need to determine for any other section because as the air is flowing its velocity is getting lesser so once it is verified for section a it's done so we have now we know that velocity maximum is less than Vmax recommended. So this velocity test is verified. This is the first step 
that needs to be done this is the first test that needs to be done in order to proceed with the duct designing procedure is to determine the dimension of rectangular duct in section a here the volume flow rate is 5000 cfm next we have to find the diameter of the duct in section a it is important to note that here we are finding the diameter but in reality the duct used in the library project is rectangular duct but we cannot find its dimension directly first we need to find a diameter equivalent to this duct before we proceed it is important to note that the friction loss taken in this calculation is 0.08 and height of the duct is taken to be 14 inches this size could be given by client or we can take as per site conditions to find the diameter of the duct we'll make use of this chart which was already discussed in section a the volume flow rate is 5000 cfm and friction loss is taken to be 0.08 so these lines intersect at this yellow circle so to find the diameter of the duct we'll draw a line from this intersection point parallel to the duct diameter so this value is very close to 26 inches so we'll take the value to be 26 inches so this is the diameter of the circular duct so the diameter of the duct has been found as 26 inches next will find the equivalent rectangular duct dimension corresponding to 26 inch duct diameter in order to do so we'll make use of this chart provided by ashtray on this chart on the first column the circular duct diameter is given in inches and on the first row the height of the duct is given in inches as we already know the diameter of the duct is found to be 26 inches so we'll select the row corresponding to 26 inch circular duct dia and the height of the rectangular duct selected by us was 14 inches so we'll select the column corresponding to 14 inch height so these two intersect at 44 inches so this table tells us that the width of the rectangular duct has to be 44 inches so the width of the duct is 44 inches therefore the dimensions of the duct are 44 inches by 14 inches so this is the dimension of the duct of section a but wait the job is not done yet we need to check the aspect ratio as discussed earlier aspect ratio is the ratio of width of the duct to its height and this aspect ratio has to lie between 1 and 4 as per standards so in our case the aspect ratio if you find we get 44 by 14 so we get 3.14 which is less than 4 so this is accepted so in section a that size of the duct is 44 inches by 14 inches we'll repeat the same procedure to find the size of the duct in section b as we have found the size of the duct in section a so in section B, the air flow rate is 4000 CFM. So first we'll determine the diameter. Again, we'll make use of this chart. Now in this case, the volume flow rate is not 5000, it is 4000. So we'll draw a line corresponding to 4000. So these two intersect at this point. Now we need to draw a line from this point parallel to the duct diameter. So this lies very close to 24 inches. So we'll take the size of the duct as 24 inches diameter so we'll mention this diameter as 24 inches. next we'll find the equivalent rectangular duct dimension corresponding to 24 inches diameter so 24 inches if we see lies on this row and the height of the duct as already taken by us was 14 inches so we'll select this column so these two intersect at 36 inches now we'll mention the width to be 36 inches so the size of our duct is 36 inches to 14 inches 
again we'll check the aspect ratio so this comes out to be 2.57 which is less than 4 so again accepted so the size of the duct in section b is 36 inches to 14 inches again we repeat the same procedure to find the size of duct in section c first we'll determine the diameter again we'll make use of this chart in this case the flow rate is 3000 cfm so now these two lines intersect at this point will draw a line parallel to duct diameter so this lies very close to 22 inches so we'll select the diameter of duct as 20 inches so the diameter is taken to be 22 inches now again we'll make use of this chart so 22 inches duct dia and 14 inches height so these two intersect at 30 inches so the width of the duct is 30 inches now the duct dimension are 30 inches to 14 inches again we check the aspect ratio and this comes 2.14 which is less than 4 so this is also accepted so in section c the size of the duct is 30 inches to 14 inches now for section d we do the same here the volume flow rate is 2000 cfm so we draw a line corresponding to this and these two intersect at this point now we draw a line parallel to duct diameter so this lies fairly close to 18 so the diameter is 18 so we'll mention the diameter here again we'll go to this chart and corresponding to 18 we select the row and 14 inches height we have already taken so these two intersect at 19 inches so width of the duct is 19 inches but we take the duct dimension to be 20 inches to 14 inches because in general the odd numbers are not available so we take 14 16 18 the, the even numbers so the duct dimension for section d is found to be 20 inches to 14 inches if you check the aspect ratio it's 1.42 which is less than 4 so it is accepted so finally the dimension of the duct in section d is 20 inches to 14 inches again doing the same for section e here air flow rate is 1000 cfm so first we'll find the diameter of the duct so corresponding to 1000 cfm we get this value which is very close to 14 inches so we'll take the diameter to 14 inches now we'll again make use of this table and we'll select the row corresponding to 14 inches and height 14 inches you see we don't get any value over here the reason is if we get any value in this intersection part so that will not follow certain standards so that's the reason why these spaces are left blank so what to do when you get this kind of case we can simply reduce the height of the duct so now we don't select 14 inches height we'll select 12 inches height so corresponding to 12 inches height and 14 inches diameter we are getting the width of the duct to be 14 inches so the width of the duct is taken to be 14 inches here the height has been selected as 12 inches not 14 inches so the duct dimensions are 14 inches to 12 inches again we'll check the aspect ratio and in this case we are getting aspect ratio as 1.16 which is less than 4 so again accepted so the dimension of duct in section e is 14 inches to 12 inches now we have the last section section f here air flow rate is 5000 cfm so we'll select 5000 cfm in the horizontal axis and draw a line corresponding to this so these two intersect at this point and then we'll draw a line parallel to duct diameter so this lies fairly close to 11 inches so we'll select the diameter of the duct as 11 inches so we'll find the equivalent rectangular duct dimension corresponding to 11 inch duct diameter and 14 inch height so you see we don't get any value in this intersection part so we need to reduce the 
height as mentioned earlier again we don't get any value so we need to keep on reducing the height of the rectangular duct so finally we get a value of 10 inches so this is the width of the rectangular duct so the width is found to be 10 inches just to note again the height which was taken to be 14 inches earlier has been reduced to 10 inches so the duct dimension are 10 inches to 10 inches again we check the aspect ratio so in this case we get the aspect ratio as 1 which is less than 4 and obviously 1 so 1 we can select so this is also accepted so finally the dimensions of the duct in section f are 10 inches to 10 inches